Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our short section on optimization for machine learning. This and the next two videos are going to be about constraints. What we have seen until now is mostly or exclusively optimization problems where the task was to minimize a loss function over a, a, a given number of parameters, but we did not consider constraints in any way. And there's tons of ways why or options or ways to, to introduce constraints into optimization problems. Right? We can say, okay, let's say all weights have to be non-negative. Or maybe we have a physics knowledge that we would like to introduce in terms of a constraint. So minimize a certain model behavior or the loss function, so optimize the model behavior, given some physical knowledge which is, which is represented as a constraint. Please do not violate energy conservation, something like this. And so there's ways and, 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 and reasons to introduce constraints that are you know, ranged from numerical reasons over knowledge-based reasons over completely practical reasons such as regularization. And before we start with a, let's say, introduction and then also a more formal definition of what optimality means under constraints, let's look at a simple example that we have already seen and the outcome when we introduce constraints will also be already known, which will be a rich regression. But nevertheless, I am back in this world where we were talking about linear models, okay? Given some input Z and some output Y, or capital N of them, I would like to find the weights so that Z is mapped linearly to Y as closely as possible in our training data set. So this is how we find the weights. And then we also see that if we sum these individual input vectors in terms of the matrix, where every row now is one of these input uh, vectors, then we have this matrix equivalent formulation. Okay? And so you can use this in terms of a, a training problem for a linear model. And now let's have a look at some Julia code where we will see how this can be done on a very simple model linear and then this will be our starting point and the motivation for using constraints. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is you look at, I'm just, you know, this is creating data. I'm starting between minus two until one. And I'm creating five points which are distributed between minus two and one. And then there's some random noise. So it's not equidistant points, but, um, you know, five points rather arbitrarily. And the output values will be a paraboloid plus random Gaussian noise. So this is exactly the setting that we have here. We have this paraboloid, uh, x squared simply, and we have these five points, which are not equidistant and which also have in the y direction um, Gaussian noise. And now what we can do is we can try to learn a model. We're not going to train on the z directly, which would also only be the, the x-axis, let's say, the vertical axis of these five points, but we are going to train a polynomial model, as we have seen multiple times. And so given that we have five training points, let's train a polynomial up to degree four. Right? The constant plus degree one, two, three, four gives me five unknown parameters and five points. So this looks like a good idea in the beginning, only that if I do it, right, let's, the code is not particularly important. What we have here, this creates our polynomial model. We have seen this before. And this now is our closed form regression problem. So the pseudo inverse, Please don't mind the lambda term here. This will be, well, we will treat this in, in, in a lot of detail in the next section. Let's say for now lambda is zero. Okay, so what you have is z transpose z inverse times z transpose times y. So this is the classic pseudo inverse and what we get is a closed form solution. And then, well, we have our model that is just how do the predictions work and then a loss function as we have seen before and this is what we get, okay? So we have a perfect fit on our training data set, but you see that we clearly have made a mess out of learning the out of sample distribution, which would be the paraboloid. So clearly it's a very, very bad model. And now if you look at the weights here, so this is a vector of the weight values or the first four of them, then you see that the quadratic term um, has a very high value and the later ones also have higher values. So the fifth one that we cannot see here, which means that in order to fit all these points, or more importantly, to fit the noise of these points, which is not what we want, we get very high parameter values for these 
um, constraints. And so here's the issue, or maybe the, the statement that we can deduct from this. Um, the weights are large. Okay, not in general, obviously, but for this example, what we see clearly, the, the quadratic term has a factor of three in front of it, which is a lot more, obviously, than, than the one, so x squared was the, or z squared was the input. And this is what gives us here these, these very problematic behavior out of our sample set. And so the question is, can we solve this by constraining it? Right? So can I put, let's say, some sort of budget on my weights and say this is allowed and furthermore I'm not allowing you to do this. And so there's different ways to, let's just try this out, okay? So there's one thing what you could do is you could introduce a hard threshold, right? So you could say, for instance, the weights J are zero for all J greater or equal than three, right? So what this means is um, starting at degree three, or excuse me, has to be degree four when we include the constant, right? So quadratic term is still allowed, cubic term and fourth order term are by this logic forbidden, right? And so let's assume we have this, then this is what we call a hard constraint, but really we have, you know, arbitrarily reduced the power of our model. Right? We do not know it uh, beforehand that it's a quadratic function that we're trying to fit. So we have introduced a very hard yeah, rule that may not be useful in, in, in our situations. So what you can also do is, let's do a more soft version of this. Okay? So let's not constrain each individual degree or let's say forbid higher order degrees. Let's put a budget on the entire thing. Okay? So what you could say is the sum starting at zero until degree Q is constrained, or more the squared sum. So let's say like the two norm of the weight vector or the square two norm, and we put a budget on this with, that we're going to call C. So I'm saying you, or I'm say, we're, we're saying where you pick any weight you want, but the overall budget should not exceed C, or the squared budget. And so what you see here is that this is essentially a constraint, right? So what I can do now is I can formalize this as a minimization problem. So minimize the weights. And then I'm just copying this loss function because we are still in this example in this linear setting. So this would be one over N Z transpose W minus Y, or oh, excuse me, the notation was z times w here, times zw minus y. Okay, this one is this one, but now we have this new part, which is subject to and this is now our constraint, so the sum Okay, so I'm looking for weights. I want to minimize this loss function, but I'm saying, well, you're not allowed to pick any weight. You need to restrict the overall budget of these weights to this one. And what we call this is an inequality constraint. Right? Because inequality because, well, obviously we're saying this is not allowed to be less than, or it has to be less or equal to this weight, right? And so there's a second type of constraint, which is, um, as you may guess, the equality constraint. And so second type. Is the equality constraint. And this overall gives us the final and, let's say, most general formulation that we can have, 
what we have in the general setting. And now I'm going away from this quadratic form, but, form, but let's just use the general one. I'm saying minimize our weights. These are still Q real numbers, and we want to minimize some loss function. Subject two, and now this can be abbreviated with s dot t dot, so exactly this one, these two constraints, and now I'm going to introduce them in a very general way. I'm saying cj is of w is smaller than zero for j from one to, and let's call this ni, so it's a number n of inequality constraints. And then the second one is what I'm going to call c hat, ci hat of w, which has to be equal to zero. Right, so and this is i from one to n e. All right, so what we see here, and now this is our very general problem that we want to solve if we have constraints, right? And all sorts of sub problems arise if we neglect equality constraints, if we neglect inequality constraints, and so on. <clears throat> so you see, this would be the non constraint problem, so no inequality, no equality constraints. This would be the, the green plus orange one here would be an inequality constraint problem, and here this is the most general form, right? And also what we had here is, this is, you see, a quadratic constraint, so it doesn't have to be the case that this is sort of a linear function or a function of any case. Right? So if you would look at this, what you can do is, uh, let's remove the, this one, put it on the other side and say less or equal than zero, and so you see this is precisely of this form. And here we have it, and this is a problem class that now is much, much broader, obviously, than, than the unconstrained one. Right? You can say, okay, some energy budget should always stay the same, or some quantities may not supersede a certain threshold, and so on. And, well, this is basically what we're going to treat in the next two videos, and we're talking about, or three videos, I guess, how to solve these problems, and also maybe even what optimality means in this situation. But before we go there, let's have a second look at our code and let's see what this budget does to our problem. And so this is what the lambda parameter was about that I, I told you about, but I'm not going to tell you how it works just yet. It's going to be part of the video from before, but what you will see is that a constraint can be transformed into an additional term in the loss function. And you will see that in the term form of linear problems, this will modify our problem, right? So just think of this before we get to know this, this lambda parameter is related to this constraint number C. Okay, so what I'm going to show you now, and we are going to dive into all the details once we're done with this one, we can now study different values for this lambda value, right? And here, a larger value for lambda means a smaller value for C, so more constrainment towards small values. And so what you see, the blue version here with lambda zero is the one we had before, the unconstrained version. And then we had different curves with, with changing lambda values. So you see here, we start at 10 to the minus two, then we have one, and then we have even bigger values. And so what you see is that you get curves, in particular the greenish one here and this pink one, they look actually pretty okay, okay? Not perfect. Well, there's obviously noise in the system and we only have five samples, but you see adding this constraint, this budget, seems to make a better job for, for the learning problem. And then you also see the, the largest one, this orange one, or this, this yellowish brownish one. See, if I you know, overdo it with the constraint, then this one is close to zero because you know, saying all the weights should be small, um, you have a hard time fitting to the data. And so, well, this is, as I said, now just a teaser because we don't know yet what this lambda parameter has to do with the constraints, but this is what we're going to learn next. We're going to study a little bit, well, of course, what does it mean to, to be, for a solution to be optimal in the constraint case, and then also how is it solved in practice. We're got no, not going to go into all the dirty details, let's say. Um, again, you can look at the, the brilliant book by Nosudal and Wright for this. But we are going to get a, a pretty good idea, I think, of how these problems can be solved. And this will help us greatly in the next chapters when we will talk about constraint optimization, let's say physics-informed learning, and topics like this where these constraints really play 
an important role. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention and see you in part number two on constraints. Thanks.